Hello, dear students. I'm Dr. Mushri Gorozov, the Associate Professor of Department of Pathological Anatomy of Azerbaijan Medical University. Let now we start our lecture. The topic of our today's lecture will followings the nosology, cardiovascular pathology, and cerebrovascular pathology. The plan of our today's lecture is nosology that will discuss about the etiology and pathogenesis of the diseases and nomenclature and classification of the diseases, cardiovascular pathology about the atherosclerosis, hypertension and ischemic heart disease we have discussing and finally uh, the cerebrovascular pathology that include the ischemic cerebral stroke, hemorrhagic cerebral stroke and hypertensic hemorrhagic pre-stroke change. Nosology uh, from uh, Greek it mean, means the nosos disease logia study of is a branch of medicine that deals with classification of diseases. Diseases may be classified by etiology, pathogenesis, which the disease is caused by mechanism or by symptoms. Alternatively, diseases may be classified according to the organ system involved. Tov this is often complicated since many diseases affect more than one organ. The coding systems of diseases. Several classification of diseases have been historically proposed and normally all of them assign the code to every supported disease. Some of them codify diseases following the path of the classification tree and other like the SNOMED use a multi-factor classification system. The most common coding system in the World Health Organization ICD series but there are other accepted classifications like DOC, Lambda, or SNOMED. Here you see the uh, schematic illustration of the ICD-10 revision. As you see here, the diseases as uh, grouped into the 22 uh, nosological groups. And uh, here I add the online version of the ICD-1 classification. For example, here, when you are entered the acute myocardial infection, you will find the following uh, subcodings that uh, regarding to the acute myocardial infection. Uh, there are several principles of uh, classification of the diseases. First, etiological classification. The diseases um, classified to the congenital and acquired diseases, and acquired diseases also divided to the infectious or uh, communicable and non-infectious or non-communicable. A second, anatomical topographical classification, for example, the diseases of the central nervous systems, diseases of the digestive system, diseases of the respiratory system, and etc. According to the character of pathological process, there are inflammatory diseases, degenerative necrotic diseases, tumors, and other diseases. According to the clinical course, we classify the fulminant, acute, subacute, chronic, and chronic active diseases, in some cases, latent virus care, abortive, and other types. According to the intensity of clinical signs and the degree of severity, uh, we can classify the mild, moderate, and severe types. According to the age and sex, um, we can classify the gynecological, pediatric, intranatal, perinatal, gerontological, and other diseases. According to the external environmental, life, geographical, professional, and other factors. There are professional, military, social, endemic diseases, ecological pathologies, etc. According to the accordance of pathogenetic or morphogenetic mechanisms, there are rheumatic diseases, specific diseases, autoimmune diseases, etc. Etiology is the cause 
of a disease. There are two groups of etiological factors, exogenic and endogenic. Pathogenesis of a disease is the biological mechanism or mechanisms that leads to the disease state. The term can also describe the origin and development of the disease and whether it is acute, chronic or recurrent. The term uh, from the uh, Greek uh, pathos, that meaning disease and genesis creation. Uh, we use uh, in the medicine some terms like at the syndrome, symptoms, um, let we uh, differentiate. What meaning the syndrome? Syndrome, from Greek, it means that concurrence is a set of medical signs and symptoms that are correlated with each other. There is no set common convention for the naming of newly identified syndromes. For example, you know the immunodeficiency syndrome, portal hypertension syndrome, thromboembolic syndrome, hepatorenal syndrome, etc. In the past, syndromes were often named after the physician or scientist who identified and described the condition in an initial publications. They are referred to as eponymo syndromes. For example, Angelma syndrome is a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by severe intellectual and developmental disability, sleep disturbance, seizures, jerk movements, fragment flower or smiling and usually happy demeanor. Some of the syndromes has become to the nosological unit of the diseases. For example, the AIDS, Hood Passer syndrome, Zollinger Ellison syndrome, and etc. But what meaning the pathomorphosis? Pathomorphosis is a resistant changing of the clinical and morphological patterns of various diseases. Causes of pathomorphosis are complex and diverse. It is assumed the possible role of the natural evolution of the diseases. Natural pathomorphosis, we call due to the evolution of pathogenic properties of the pathogen. However, the more significant and authoritative role of active preventive and treatment measures, especially antibiotic therapy, we call the therapeutic pathomorphosis. Modern active chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, distort the picture of the disease, depriving these typical features. It is therapeutically due pathomorphosis, dramatically change not only the picture of many diseases but also morbidity. They sharply change not only the overall morbidity and mortality but also during and the pathology of individual diseases. Virtually disappeared some children's infection diseases. Scarlet fever, diphtheria have become rare diseases. Change the incident of infection diseases of adults. Lobar pneumonia gave earlier greater mortality, has become a rare disease like typhoid fever, typhus, and other diseases. All this change, the general panorama of diseases, cured pathomorphosis, all nosological systems that better be described as mesomorph. For example, the mesomorph within specific groups of diseases can be change of relations in the frequency of different forms of cancer. A few decades ago, lung cancer was a rare disease it takes the second place after gastric cancer. Medical diagnosis uh, that abbreviated as the DX or DS is the process of determining which disease or condition explains a person's symptoms and signs. It is most often referred to as diagnosis, with the medical context being implicit. The information required for diagnosis is typically collected from a history and physical examination of the person seeking medical care. Often, one or more diagnostic procedures, such as a diagnostic test, are also done during the process. Diagnosis is often challenging because many signs and symptoms are non-specific. For example, redness of the skin, erythema, 
by itself is a sign of many disorders and thus doesn't tell the healthcare professional what is wrong. Thus, differential diagnosis, in which several possible explanations are compared and contrasted, must be performed. This involves the correlation of various pieces of information followed by the recognition and differentiation of patterns. Occasionally, the process is made easy by a sign of symptom that is pathognomic. Here you see the two examples of the medical uh, report, diagnosis, one of them the draft uh, for the surgical pathology report, that uh, here that includes the uh, histopathological diagnosis, and here were taken from one the hospital uh, about the left maxillary soft tissue, uh, the lesion that is uh, diagnosis as the fibroma giant cell type or another disease the varioliform syndrome. Let we discuss about some kinds of the disease that uh, specifically uh, classified. Uh, what means the main primary disease? It uh, means that disease which leads to this or cause the entering the patients into hospital. The morphologic signs may be shown in pathological diagnosis after the main disease. For example, the hypertension. First, we write the hypertension uh, because this is the autopsy material, autopsy uh, diagnosis. Or we can, uh, in the bracket, write the weight of the heart, thickness of the lateral uh, wall of left ventricle, um, the thickness of the right ventricle. Competitive diseases. Each of these uh, diseases may cause it they separately. For example, in the uh, same patients has uh, both the myocardial infection and abundant carcinoma metastasis in lungs. When we uh, do the autopsies, we found these two uh, features. The sequence of diseases determined for the clinical importance. Combined diseases. Do not cause a death separately, but when they present in same patients, accelerate each other's and cause a death. For example, the rupture of cerebral vascular aneurysm after slightly trauma. Background disease. The disease or pathological process which leads to development of main disease. For example, the main disease is myocardial infection. The background plays role the atherosclerosis of coronary artery of heart or the main disease of gastric cancer, uh, the background disease for the gastric cancer is chronic atrophic gastritis. In the background disease notes after main disease in pathology report. Second disease, the another independent nosological disease that develops as a late result or pre of previously existing disease, such as the development of adhesion disease after the intestinal uh, surgical resection. Accompanying disease present in the cadaver and doesn't any relation with death. For example, in the person with the uh, in the patient with the gastric ulcer has also the cholelithiasis, the stone disease of the gallbladder. Complication of disease is an unfavorable evolution or uh, consequence of a disease, a health condition or a therapy. The disease can be, become worse in this rarity or show a higher number of signs, symptoms or new pathological change, become widespread throughout all the body or affect other organ systems. A new disease may also appear as a complication to a previous existing disease. One of these complications caused to the death of patients. For example, the perforation of stomach wall in gastric ulcer and development of peritonitis. Clinical anatomical epigresis are an important part of the pathological autopsy protocol and includes followings. Cause, condition and mechanisms of development of the disease, background cause of, uh, to the development of the disease, corresponding morphological and functional change occurred in the organism from starting of disease until his finish, mechanisms of disorder of the relation between organs and systems, explanation of emerged clinical
clinical symptoms and syndromes and their morphological basis, developmental mechanisms of the complications of main disease, conducted diagnostic and treatment procedures, their positive and negative effects, iatrogenesis, malpractices, influence of conducted medical manipulations through the course of disease, shortcomings during the writing of medical documents, especially of the medical history, and results of the comparative analysis of clinical and pathological change. Let now uh, we discuss about the iatrogenesis. Iatrogenesis, uh, from Greek, it means the brought forth by the healer, iatros physician, genesis creation, refers to an effect on a person resulting from any activity of one or more persons acting as healthcare professionals or promoting products or services as beneficial to health that doesn't support the goal of the person affected. For example, anaphylactic shock during the hemotransfusion, dysfunctional atrophy of adrenal cortex or medulla after the long-time therapy of viral hepatitis by the adrenocorticotropic hormones, anemia during the radiation therapy, immunodeficiency syndrome during the treatment with immunosuppressants, hypoxia and asphyxia during the anesthesia, etc. Half of the iatrogenesis occurs due malpractices. Discrepancies between clinical and pathological diagnosis. Sometimes the clinical diagnosis as a whole and sometimes the main disease as well as any complication or the accompanying disease is not confirmed in pathological anatomical examination of the cadaver and it is considered as a clinical physician error. It's called the discrepancies between clinical and pathological diagnosis. If the gross medical error, fault or negligence are found in autopsy, these facts are noted in the clinical anatomical epigrisis and in the medical history, are informed to the administration of the medical institution and are discussed in the clinical anatomical conferences in hospitals. The facts, as requires by the pathologists, can be given to the appropriate law enforcement authorities. Uh, the classification of the medical errors uh, according to the character. There are tactical medical errors and technical medical errors. The tactical medical errors, the treatment process is not properly organized. Technical medical errors, failure of the preparation of medical record. Dependent on the stage of occurrence, there are three types of the medical errors. Diagnostic, treatment and preventive medical errors. Third, depending on the reasons of occurrence, uh, there are two types, the objective and subjective uh, medical errors. Objective medical errors, the shortcomings in the organization of health and medical services, absent the continued medical education, and etc. Uh, subjective medical errors depended on the doctor's personal characteristics, tactical and technical mistakes, uh, inexperiences, lack the necessary level of knowledge, and required level of qualification and others. There are three categories of uh, discrepancies between clinical and pathological diagnosis. First category, failure to identify of the disease before the patient is taken to the hospital or the wrong clinical diagnosis due to severity of the patient's condition, extension, of the pathological process and very short duration of the patient's hospital stay. Second category of discrepancies, failure to identify the disease at, at the hospital, the incorrect clinical diagnosis as a result of the absence of appropriate and available examinations. However, even if the correct diagnosis of the disease could have a decisive influence on the course of the patient's death, the proper diagnosis could be made in clinic. Third category, the cause of fatal outcome of the disease is failure to correct diagnosis by a doctor and due to the absence of a proper doctor's or the medical doctor's tactic selection. Now, uh, the second part of our lecture regarding the cardiovascular pathology. And we'll discuss about the three uh, 
diseases, the atherosclerosis, hypertension, and ischemic heart disease. Let first uh, we remember the structure of the blood vessels. Um, here you uh, see the schematic diagrams and the histological structure of the large vessels. Here is the uh, general schematic illustration of the vessel wall that they have the three uh, tunics, the tunica intima, the inner layer, the tunica media, uh, especially that include the uh, elastic fibers and smooth muscles says that they uh, differ uh, regarding the uh, vessel types uh, and tunica adventitia here uh, you see the wall of the uh, elastic artery that the tunica media of the elastic artery uh, consists of the many numbers of the uh, parallel located elastic lamella and the, the, all of the blood vessels they covered by the endothelial uh, says that they play a very important role of the blood uh, vessel functions. Uh, there are following types of the uh, arteriosclerosis. The term of the sclerosis you remember from the pathological anatomy. One uh, cause that sclerosis the formation of the uh, rough abnormal connective tissue. First the metabolic arteriosclerosis or the arteriosclerosis arteriolosclerosis or hyalinosis at the hypertension, inflammatory arteriosclerosis, toxic arteriosclerosis, allergic arteriosclerosis, primary medicalcinosis of arteries, and senile arteriosclerosis. The term of the arteriosclerosis, it uh, describes the uh, formation of the development of the sclerotic tissue in the wall of the arteries. Uh, now let me uh, discuss about the atherosclerosis. Uh, it is a specific type of arteriosclerosis affecting primarily the intima of large and medium sized muscular arteries. Uh, chronic inflammatory response in the walls of artery develops here. It is uh, pro progressive slowly, a buildup of the fat cholesterol within the artery wall. Characterized by intimal lesions called the ateromas, ateromatos, or fibrofatty plaques. The common sites uh, of the atherosclerosis are abdominal aorta, coronaries, popliteal artery, the internal carotid arteries, the vessels of the circle of villages, uh, where the uh, turbulence flow or the lamella flow of the uh, blood change to the turbulence flow. Uh, in places uh, that the blood vessels they uh, branch into uh, other vessels. There is factors of the atherosclerosis. The first, the unhealthy blood cholesterol levels. Uh, you know about the lipoproteins, uh, cholesterol from the biochemistry uh, course. Uh, this includes the high uh, low density uh, cholesterol sometimes called the bad cholesterol and low uh, high density cholesterol sometimes called the good cholesterol then high blood pressure blood pressure is considered high if this stays at or above 140 slash 90 mm ig over time then smoking, insulin resistance, diabetes, overweight or obesity, lack of physical activity, unhealthy diet, the foods that are high in saturated and trans fats, cholesterol, sodium and sugar. Older age, in men the risk increases after age 45, in women after age 55. And family history of early heart disease. Your risk for atherosclerosis increases if your father or brother was diagnosed with heart disease before 55 years of age, or if your mother or sister was diagnosed with a heart disease before 65 years of age. There are some theories of atherosclerosis uh, formation, uh, first the thrombogenic uh, theory by Duget and uh, incrustation theory, Rokitansky. Uh, response to injury of the endothelial 
cis theory, immunological theory, herontological theory, monoclonal theory, viral theory, inhibition theory offered by the Virkov. It means that infiltration of plasma components to the vascular wall, elementary infiltration theory uh, by the Aniskova and Kalatov, increasing of elementary cholesterol level in blood, receptor theory, and last three theory are completed historical chronological sequence and was formed the lipoprotein theory. Let now uh, we repeat our knowledge about the lipoprotein metabolism in organism from the uh, biochemistry course. Chylomicrons, you know that in the enter size, uh, there are the chylomicrons that they uh, consist of the more triglyceride and less cholesterol. Very low density lipoproteins, uh, VLDL, are formed in the liver, transfer the lipids from hepatocytes in the into the blood. Uh, they consist of the uh, triglyceride and cholesterol. Medium density lipoproteins, they cholesterol three days. Low density lipoproteins, 70% of, of blood proteins, that they consist of the cholesterol and uh, apoprotein B protein, APOP, uh, 100 protein. Uh, low and very low density lipoproteins are atherogenic lipoproteins, as we call the bad uh, cholesterol. But high density lipoproteins enter atherogenic or the good cholesterol. Uh, high uh, density lipoproteins forms in cells that participate in removing and additional lipids uh, from cell and passing them to the uh, medium density lipoproteins. Apoprotein is a protein in the lipoproteins. Normal level of cholesterol in blood uh, is uh, 20 mg per liter. And the ratio of the uh, HDL to the LDL equal the 1 to 4. Uh, so the low density uh, lipoprotein cholesterol deliver cholesterol to peripheral tissues. The good cholesterol, the high density uh, lipoproteins, mobilizes cholesterol from developing and existing atheromas and transport it to the liver for excretion in the bile. So we discussed about the, some uh, theories about the cholesterol uh, atherosclerosis formation. Uh, the current hypothesis is response to endothelial cells injury and initiated by endothelial dysfunction. That the main components of the uh, plaque, uh, fibrofatty plaque that uh, forms in the wall of the uh, arteries during the atherosclerosis, they include the lipid containing macrophages extracellular matrix elements and the cells uh, and also the proliferating smooth muscle cells and here you see the schematic illustration of the fibro fatty plaque that they include the macrophage that lipid laden uh, macrophage will uh, uh, call it the xanthan cells the smooth muscle cells the uh, Pathogenesis of the atherosclerosis. The, during the atherosclerosis, first the endothelial cells undergo the uh, damage, but uh, they are cause not completely understood. Uh, the two most important causes of the endothelial dysfunction uh, now, first the hemodynamic disturbances and hypercholesterolemia. Inflammation is also an important contributor. And here you see uh, the injury to the endothelium, then uh, the chronic inflammatory response. Here you see the uh, activation of the T cells uh, by the cyto, uh, cytokines uh, that they uh, stimulate the smooth muscle cells that uh, they located in the media and they start to proliferate, they migrate. Uh, from the media to the intima. You see uh, here the migration of the smooth muscle cells. Then the proliferation of the smooth muscle cells in the intima. The excess production of the extracellular matrix, matrix by the fibroblasts. And the enhanced lipid accumulation in the intima. And you see that the macrophage that engulfs the uh, cholesterol, lipids that became to the uh, xanthan cells.
here. Also, the illustration uh, of the formation of the fibro fatty plaque. Here you see the normal uh, blood vessel. Here the, you see the uh, starting the endothelial injury with the adhesion of the monocytes and platelets, the migration of the monocytes and smooth muscle cells into the uh, intima, and uh, smooth muscle cell proliferation and the extracellular matrix production. And here finally we see we do the well developed the atherosclerotic. Uh, plaque. Uh, there are uh, we, we divide uh, two periods of atherosclerosis as the microscopically and microscopically. Macroscopic periods of atherosclerosis there are four uh, periods. First, the fatty spores or the fatty streaks present nearly universally in children. They do not cause any disturbance in blood flow. However, they may be precursors of the uh, atherosclerosis. Fatty uh, streaks begin as multiple yellow flat spots, fatty dots, which are less than one millimeter in uh, diameter. So, uh, subsequently, they merge into elongated one centimeter long and longer fatty streaks. They are composed of lipid filled foam cells or the xanthan cells with T lymphocytes and extracellular lipids. Second period uh, we call the fibrous nodules, a symmetrical whitish yellowish solid consistency. The transfer diameter is less than one centimeter. Nodules are narrowed to the vascular lumen that we classify to 10%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 90%. Then uh, this is the wound formation uh, period for formation of the artery embolism. Uh, the content of the uh, atherosclerotic plaque uh, they can cause the embolism and finally the calcium salts they sedimentate into the wound and here forms the uh, arterial calcinosis the destruction of the vascular wall here uh, we see uh, we do the plaques that the diameter vary uh, between 0.3 to the 1.5 diameter, but they can uh, merge to form the larger masses. And here you see the fatty streak. And here, here you see the fatty streak in the wall of the arteries. Now that we uh, discussed about the microscopic periods of atherosclerosis, first prelipidic period is the latent period of atherosclerosis, increasing the permeability of endothelium and basal membrane, mucoid swelling of intima, destruction of basal membrane, elastic and collagen fibers are found here. This is called, uh, we call the microscopic change. Lipidosis, uh, lipoidosis, this is the second period that focal infiltration of lipids of, uh, and the lipoprotease uh, and presence of the xanthan cells that macrophage engulf the lipids. Uh, but this process is irreversible process. Third period, liposclerosis, uh, that they continue to chronic dystrophy, uh, chronic hypoxia, sclerosis, and formation of the fibrous nodules. Fourth period, arteriomatosis, the xanthan cells that the macrophage that engulf the lipids and the smooth muscle cells inside the fibrous nodule are ruptures, necrotized to form a pasty diet mass with, with the porridge like structure. The detritus mass uh, that include the free lipoproteins, plasma proteins, natural lipids, and cleavage products of collagen and elastic fibers, commonly called the ateroma or the atherosclerotic nodule. The fifth uh, and the sixth periods, the like the microscopic uh, last periods, the wound formation and arterial calcinosis. Here you see the uh, microscopically the uh, macrophage derived foam cells in the intima and the uh, atherosclerotic uh, nodule in the wall of the artery that they narrow the uh, vessel lumen. The clinical complications uh, of atherosclerosis 
are the myocardial infarction, cerebral infarction, uh, aortic aneurysms, mesenteric occlusion, and peripheral vascular disease, such as the gangrene of the legs. Morphological changes that are seen on macro and microscopic levels in atherosclerosis are the neovascularization, the formation of new blood vessels, calcification, hemorrhage, fissure, ulcer, thrombosis, medial thinning, cholesterol microemboli, and aneurysmal dilatation. Uh, here you see the illustration of the uh, outcomes of the atherosclerosis. Here are the preclinical phase. Usually in the young age, uh, we discuss with you the formation of the fatty streaks that we continue with the fibro fatty uh, plaque and the advanced and vulnerable uh, plaque. But here, this is the uh, clinical phase, usually middle age to older uh, patients. We see with you the formation of the aneurysm and the rupture of the blood vessels, occlusion by thrombosis and the critical stenosis. Now, let us discuss about the hypertension. There are two types of the hypertension, the essential and symptomatic, or uh, we call the idiopathic or primary hypertension and secondary hypertension. The idiopathic hypertension has no identifiable cause. This chronic disease characterized with stable high level of blood pressure. But secondary hypertension is emerging as one of the signs of other disease. There are four groups of diseases that cause the symptomatic hypertension. First, the renal disease, nephrogenic and vasorenal hypertension, central nervous system diseases, neurogenic hypertension, endocrine diseases, and vascular diseases. Etiology of chronic hypertension. The nervous tensions, tobacco smoking, hypodynamia, obesity, heredity, salted food, sex and age. Here you see the uh, comparison between the uh, chronic or benign hypertension or the malignant hypertension we call is as the hypertensive crisis. The etiology of the chronic hypertension mainly is idiopathic but of the etiology of the malignant hypertension is mainly is symptomatic. The age, uh, the chronic uh, or the benign hypertension usually absent in the young persons on the 45 years old, by the hypertensive crisis is forming until 25-35 years old. The chronic hypertension mainly affect the males than males, but the hypertensive crisis is equal in the males and females. The 5% of the ER population is sick by the chronic hypertension, but the hypertensive crisis uh, are rare. Is rare. The cause uh, of the chronic hypertension, uh, chronic hypertension continues for many years, but the hypertensive crisis continues for one uh, and uh, one, five, one half years. The diastolic pressure uh, is the 90 to 120 mm uh, hygiene in the chronic uh, hypertension, but uh, in the malignant hypertension it is uh, 130 more than 130. Hypertensive crisis is uh, the clinical features of the hypertensive crisis or the malignant hypertension. The high blood pressure, diastole is higher than uh, 120-130 uh, millimeter uh, Hg, weakening eyesight, dizziness and hematuria, acute spasm of arterioles, destruction of basal membrane of intima, plasmorrhagia and edema in the wall of arterioles, fibrinoid necrosis in the wall of the arterioles, thrombi in the vascular lumen, and in the kidney, they uh, result the malignant nephrosclerosis of far. But the chronic hypertension, uh, they continue in the three periods. First, the preclinic period or the transitional or uh, functional or transitory, second period of dispersed vascular change, and third period of secondary change in organs. The first period change in vascular wall and heart. Uh, in the arterioles, 
the, we found the plasma ragea and mucoid swelling in the intima, in the road of vascular lumen, in the arteries, hypertrophic elastic membrane, atherosclerotic chains, but in the wall of the heart, the concentric hypertrophy of left ventricle. In the second period, uh, the arterioles, uh, the wall of the arterioles affected by the arterial sclerosis and hyalinosis. You have remember that the hyalinosis, the marker of the uh, morphological marker of the hypertension, uh, the hyalinosis of the arterioles. Arteries, uh, we can find the atherosclerosis in the all of type the arteries and elastofibrosis. But in the heart, the change they uh, became the deeper, uh, the core bovine and the parenchymatous degenerations, and uh, here develops the eccentric hypertrophy in the clinic state related uh, with the decomp uh, decompensation phase. And third period, uh, the change in vascular wall and the heart, the arterioles also they show the arteriosclerosis and hyalinosis. The arteries, the stenosing, Arter, uh, sclerosis, the heart, the arterial sclerotic cardiosclerosis, necrobiotic change in cardiac muscle cells. There are three clinical morphological types of hypertension, chronic hypertension, cardiac type, cerebral type, and renal type. The cardiac form or type of hypertension uh, we uh, found in the uh, wall of the heart, the arteriosclerotic diffuse small focal cardiosclerosis that if they became to, uh, activated in the acute phase, they were complicated with the myocardial infection. For the cerebral form of the hypertension, uh, atrophy of the cerebral cortex in their own uh, develops the degenerative chains. The complication is hemorrhagic stroke that we will discuss later. Now, and the renal form or the renal type of the hypertension, the arteriosclerotic nephrosclerosis or primary shrinking of kidney complication is uremia. In this slide, you see the microscope of the hypertension. Uh, this uh, biopsy taken from the chronic hypertension uh, diseases, and here you see the uh, changing of the wall of the arterioles, the onion skin thickening of arterioles and the narrowing of the lumen. But this biopsy taken from the malignant hypertension uh, kidneys and here you see the interlobular arteries and ar arterioles that demo demonstrate the densely eosinophilic material that representing fibronode necrosis of the vessel walls. This is the microscope of the malignant hypertension. And localization of the atherosclerotic chains in the uh, hypertension, the wall of the blood vessels forms the circular nodule, but in the atherosclerosis, the segmentary nodule. This is a very uh, interesting comparison. In the final part, we will discuss with you about the ischemic heart diseases. The first, let me uh, remember the um, anatomy of the heart. As you know, the human heart has the four chamber, two atria, and the two ventricles. Uh, here you see the left side of the heart and the right side, and uh, uh, between the atria and the ventricles are the valves, and between the atria and the ventricular uh, is the Septa is the interventricular septa, interatrial uh, septa. Here you see the, the schematic diagram of the uh, wall of the heart that uh, consists of the three layers as the endocardium, myocardium, endocardium is the word thin layer, myocardium, and the uh, epicardium. The epicardium this is the, uh, you know, the this is the pericardium. The, uh, from anatomy, you know that there are two types of the pericardium. First, the uh, fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium. Serous pericardium has the two layers, the parietal and the visceral pericard uh, pericardium. The visceral pericardium is also called the epicardium here. 
this is the pericardial cavity uh, is a very uh, fine histological section from the heart wall that here you see the myocardium and the epicardium the coronary artery section and the coronary sinuses and the uh, section of the mitral valve mitral valve and uh, the function of the heart you know there are some functions one of them is the pumping of the blood toward the organs the second main function we include the drainage of the venous blood from the organs the very important uh, function that in the heart diseases the mainly the this function these uh, features of the heart that they drainage of the venous blood during the heart diseases, cardiac diseases is uh, complicated uh, and uh, as you know the heart has uh, all the impulse conductor system that includes the this is the uh, consists of the atypical cardiac muscle system the sinoatrial node the atrioventricular node the uh, his fibers that they uh, finished with the Purkinje fibers that the Purkinje fibers they uh, reach the uh, corda tendine. So also heart has the some uh, hormonal activity that they produce the natrium uh, uretic uh, pectin and others. Uh, now let me uh, pass to the ischemic or the coronary heart disease. The ischemic or coronary heart disease is morphological and functional change in myocardium occurs due to narrowing of lumen of coronary arteries and arterioles and absolute or relative dysfunction of myocardial blood supply known as the ischemia. Ischemic heart disease occurs due to atherosclerotic change in the coronary artery or hyalinosis in the arterioles of the heart during hypertension that we discussed early. Sudden cardiac death is called this which occurs within a few six hours of cardiac symptoms 250,000 deaths in the united states per year are caused by what is referred to as sudden cardiac death sudden cardiac death is also known as a massive heart attack in which the heart converts from sinus rhythm to ventricular fibrillation in ventricular fibrillation the heart is unable to contract fully resulting in lack of blood being pumped to the vital organs. Ventricular fibrillation requires shock from defibrillator shockable rhythm. Macroscopically and light microscopically no cardiovascular change or cardiac sclerosis appear. And yet you see the, uh, the cause of the sudden cardiac death. The risk factors of ischemic heart disease they uh, divided to Uncontrollable and controllable. Uncontrollable they include the sex, the hereditary race and age. But controllable include the high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, smoking, physical activity, obesity, diabetes and stress and injury. And here uh, they mean that physical inactivity, the hypodynamic or the less physical activity. Uh, the classification of the ischemic heart disease there are acute and chronic ischemic heart disease acute ischemic heart disease also divided to the uh, two uh, diseases the first acute ischemic degeneration of myocardium and myocardial infection chronic also divided to the diffuse small focal cardiosclerosis and post infection large focal cardiosclerosis acute ischemic uh, degeneration of myocardium or we call the acute reversible ischemic lesion of myocardium develops mainly due to long term up to 20 30 minutes spasm of damaged coronary vessels major morphological change during histochemical examinations in cytoplasm of cardiac muscle cells are found reduction or complete disappearance of glycogen reserve sharp decrease of activity the dihydrogenase, oxidase, and phosphorylase enzymes, reduction of potassium ions or their total disappearance, increasing of sodium and calcium ions. During electron microscopic examinations in cardio cardiac muscle cells are shown swelling and destruction of the endoplasmic reticulum, 
destruction and deformity, science of apoptosis and other necrobiotic chains in mitochondria, especially in their internal membranes and crystal. In this slide, uh, we see we do the early acute myocardial infection. Here you see the prominent pin contraction contraction bands, and this is the increasing loss of cross striations. And some contraction bands are also seen, and their nuclei are undergo the cariolysis. And some neutrophils we can found between the cardiac muscle cells that they infiltrate into the uh, myocardium. Myocardial infection. Myocardial infection is a necrosis of heart muscle secondary to prolonged lack of oxygen supply, ischemia. Myocardial infection or the myocardial ischemic necrosis appears microscopically and microscopically 6 to uh, 18 hours after acute myocardial ischemia. There are four main causes of myocardial infection. Long term, more than 20 30 minutes spasm of modified pathological coronary vessels of the heart is more common. At this time, at, at this same time, the long term spasm of atherosclerotic vessels or hyalinized arterioles cause the absolutely blocking of blood supply of the area where they are vascularized. Second cause the thrombosis of coronary arteries develops as a result of injury of atherosclerotic nodules arising in coronary artery during the cardiac type of atherosclerosis and as a result of breaking of the integrity of vascular intima. Thromboembolism of coronary arteries occurs in very few cases. The thrombus comes to the artery from the left ventricle during endocarditis or from the initial part of the coronary artery. And fourth cause the acting or the working of heart with modified pathological coronary vessels in physical tension. There are two morphological phases of myocardial infection. First, the necrotic phase and sclerotic phase. The necrotic phase, the first signs of coagulative necrosis appear in 4 to uh, 11 hours. After 18 hours, the infection appears macroscopically and microscopically. This phase lasts about two weeks. But after 10, 14 days, the development of the connective tissue gradually starts about four weeks. It results in a scar formation. It's called the post-infection large focal cardiosclerosis. The heart restores this function within about the four weeks. So in the cardiology, uh, they call this as the golden four weeks. This slide illustrates the microscopy of the acute myocardial infection in the interventricular septum. After several days, there is a yellow center with necrosis and inflammation surrounded by hyperemic border. If you remember uh, from the pathological anatomy, one we discussed about the types of the necrosis and the infection, and we call is white infection with the uh, hyperemic corolla is the demarcation zone and the histology of the acute myocardial infection that here you uh, see the necrotic area that uh, appearance of the neutrophils the neutrophils seen at about the 11 24 hours after onset of infection and uh, the infection area uh, edematose and heavily infiltrated with the uh, neutrophils, but here you see the uh, intact, uh, not damage the myocardium. Uh, there is the sharp demarcation between the necrotic area and the normal area. Uh, here you see the three days old acute infection with a heavy neutrophilic infiltrate, and the necrotic uh, cardiac muscle cells are replaced by collection of neutrophils to initiate the process of inflammation and repair. And here also you see the uh, microscopic features. 
the one day old infection we see the wavy fibers here uh, and the coagulative necrosis the uh, up to three days as we uh, seen in the previous slides the neutrophilic infiltration one two weeks the formation of granulation tissue and finally the formation of the scar tissue let uh, we uh, continue our lecture with the some uh, uh, classification principles of the myocardial infection uh, there are some uh, principles first according to the uh, according to the time, we classify three types of the myocardial infection primary, recurrent, and secondary, or the repeated myocardial infection. Uh, primary myocardial infection is the first time affect, affection of the uh, myocardium of the patients. Recurrent myocardial infection occurs before than four weeks after the primary infection. It usually results fatal because the myocardium. Uh, is uh, damaged and is not completely recovered and after the primary myocardial infection. But the secondary uh, myocardial infection has the good prognosis. It occurs four weeks after the primary myocardial infection. Uh, second, according to the localization in the different areas of heart, we we'll classify the lateral infection of left ventricle, posterior infection of left ventricle, anterior infection of left ventricle, infection of interventricular system, and uh, subtotal infection of myocardium. Third uh, classification according to the regional distribution of effects. We classified four types of infection. Subendocardial infection, the most common localization, occurs as a result of long-term spasm of coronary vessels. The necrotic area is confined to their inner one-third or uh, half of the left ventricular wall, the endocardium. As the demarcation zone on the endocardial side cannot be formed, throm thrombus is formed to protect it. Because this thrombi breaks down and causes thromboembolic syndrome, this type is considered dangerous and severe. Second type of uh, infection, sub-epicardial infection. On the epicardium, overlying the necrotic area, they lost the fibrinose inflammation. Third, intermural infection. Necrosis of single or small groups of muscle fibers in the mass of myocardium. Transmural infection caused by the complete persisting occlusion of the large arterial branch of the coronary arteries. In 90% uh, cases, it results by thrombosis of vascular lumen. Necrotic area of the myocardium in the transmural infection is surrounded by demarcation zone from the lateral side by fibrinose pericarditis in the epicardium uh, from the outside and by the thrombotic masses on the inside in the endocardium. Uh, here you see the subendocardial and transmural infection. Uh, some uh, scientists they uh, are they Consider it that the, all of the infects are the subendocardial infects that they located in the inner uh, one third or to half of ventricular wall that to decrease the circulating blood volume that they uh, results by the shock, hypertension, lies, thrombus, and the circumferential. But uh, if they uh, continue, they can. Uh, continue to form the transmural infection. Transmural infection. Uh, this slide illustrates the acute myocardial infection of the anterior left ventricular wall and septum in uh, cross section. This is nearly the transmural. Here you see the yellow center with necrosis and the demarcation zone, the surrounded the hyperemic zone, the zone of the demarcation from the lateral side. If it is the transmural infection, we said that from the in the, in the cardium here will uh, formation of the thrombus and uh, by the epicardium the pericarditis. 
and fourth uh, principle according to the size of the necrotic area. We classify the three types. The first, the small focal infection or the microinfection. The necrotic, uh, the size of the necrotic area less than some millimeters. Then large focal infection and extensive infection. The size of the necrotic area uh, sometimes they can reach to some centimeters. Uh, but the subtotal infection usually occurs if more than half of the left ventricle is affected. Let's discuss some about the, some clinical uh, features and the diagnosis of the myocardial infection. Uh, the severe chest pain, more powerful and intense than synocardial pain, takes more than 50 20 minutes, is not relieved by nitroglycerin, radiates to the left scapula, shoulder, upper extremity, and jaw regions. Signs of acute heart failure, acute common venous hyperemia, edema in tissues and organs, hemorrhage by diapedesis, degenerative necrotic chains, and etc., and electrocardiographic uh, chains, uh, and laboratory diagnostic uh, markers we use, and the troponins, uh, the creatine kinase, uh, maybe atypical types of the uh, myocardial infection. Uh, as well abdominal, asymptomatic, and etc. For example, some patients uh, they go to the gastroenterologist for the, uh, the stomach ache. Uh, after the checking, uh, the physicians they diagnose the myocardial infection. Cardiologists. The outcomes of the myocardial infection patients. Uh, hospitalized patients where the angiography echocardiography and perfusion uh, scintigraphy are available. Usual fate are first, about 25% of patients die of cardiogenic shock or fetal arrhythmia. Patients who survive the acute phase may develop the congestive heart failure, cardiac arrhythmia, left ventricular failure with pulmonary edema, rupture of ventricular wall, interventricular symptom, and papillary muscle thrombomyelism. 10 to 20 percent patients recover with no complications and early restoration of blood flow by thrombolysis or balloon angioplasty provides better prognosis. The diagnosis of the myocardial infection based on symptoms, electrocardiographic change and serum elevation of myocardial enzymes, that, uh, creatine kinase, MB isoenzymes or the other proteins, that troponin, I troponin T or myoglobin, that leak out of dead cells. The classic electrocardiographic finding is the normal PQRST complex, uh, but in the myocardial infection, especially in the transmural infection, we found the elevation of the ST complex and in the subendocardial ischemia, the uh, depression of the ST segment. Complication of the myocardial infection that depended on the size, location, uh, duration of the lesion. Uh, within minutes to three days of onset, uh, arrhythmias develops. That's when uh, 75 to uh, 9 to 5 persons. The ventricular fibrillation block of the atrioventricular bundles and this branch causes acute heart failure. Then, cardiogenic shock. In the 10 to 15 percent, the usually in large impact, causing acute heart failure. Thrombotic complications, the 15 uh, to 40 percent neural thrombus, our infect area, or atrial thrombus, causing embolism of brain, kidney, etc., and rupture of the heart. In uh, 3 to 14 days, the large impacts, there is softening of dead muscle. Myomalacia cordis leading to rupture and death. Site of rupture in ventricular wall, papillary muscle, and interventricular system. Acute fibrinose or hemorrhagic pericarditis over infect area. After weeks or months, it develops a chronic heart failure and cardiac aneurysm, which may rupture, reducing hemopericardium and death. Here are some illustrations about the, the gross view of myocardial rupture. The myocardial aneurysm with thrombosis inside. 
left ventricular aneurysm containing the neural thrombus and left ventricular aneurysm you see the very thin white wall of the aneurysm toward the apex here then the ventricular wall rupture into the pericardial cavity can produce the life threatening cardiac tamponade and uh, my, uh, microscopically we see the uh, mesothelial ep uh, epithelium that they cover the pericardium and the hemorrhage beneath the uh, mesothelium that we call the hemorrhagic pericarditis. Uh, chronic ischemic heart disease or the ischemic cardiomyopathy occurs during cardiac forms of atherosclerosis and hypertension. Atherosclerotic cardiosclerosis and arteriolar sclerotic cardiosclerosis uh, they cause the chronic ischemic heart disease. And during this disease develops the chronic hypoxia and the small foci in perovascular spaces, diffuse development of the connective tissue between cardiac muscle cells as thin septa and bands that they leads to the formation of the sclerosis. The cardiac muscle cells are not destroyed. They are atrophied because pressed out of the environment. Lipofuscinosis can occur in cardiomyocytes. Here you see the atherosclerosis in the proximal left interior descending coronary uh, that removed from the heart that these patients had mild to moderate atherosclerosis to the coronary arteries. And here you see the diffuse cardiosclerosis or diffuse uh, atherosclerotic cardiosclerosis. Another uh, disease is the diffuse small focal cardiosclerosis, as we call the interstitial fibrosis of myocardium, angina pectoris in clinic, chest pain, the crushing, squeezing, pressing pain in the interior chest and maybe referred in neck and jaws, the left arm and the upper abdomen, that are relieved by nitroglycerin. Types of the angina pectoris, there are three types, the stable angina, the most common patterns, the caused by any additional stress and increasing function of the heart, prince metal angina, classically occurs at the rest and is caused by reversible spasm normal to severe atherosclerotic coronary arteries, and unstable angina, characterized by prolonged pain. It was the uh, clinical features of the diffuse small focal cardiosclerosis uh, that they developed uh, after uh, regarding the atherosclerosis and the hypertension. Now let me discuss the post-infection large focal cardiosclerosis, represent the healing process of infection focus in myocardium occurs to the replacement of necrotic heart muscle by fibrosis tissue. Microscopically, we see the large area of whitish firm scar tissue. Microscopically, formation of the scar tissue may lead to chronic cardiac aneurysm. This in post infection cardiac sclerosis occurs for two reasons. For the sudden heart death due to the severe disorders in conducting system of heart and chronic heart failure. Here is the post-infection large focal cardiosclerosis, the gross view in the wall of the heart, and the microscopically we see the formation of the scar tissue in the heart. And the key points for the prevention of the ischemic heart disease, get regular medical checkups, control your blood pressure, check your cholesterol, do not smoke, Exercise regularly, maintain a healthy weight, eat a hard, healthy diet, and manage stress. Now let me discuss about the cerebrovascular diseases and the pathology of the cerebrovascular diseases. The term cerebrovascular disease includes all disorders in which an area of the brain is temporarily or permanently affected by ischemia or bleeding, and one or more of the cerebral blood vessels are involved in the pathological process. Disease of the cerebral blood vessels equal atherosclerosis of the cerebral arteries and hyalinosis of cerebral arteries in hypertension and commonly uh, called as the cerebrovascular disease. 
the disease account for 10% of all deaths. The direct causes of cerebrovascular disease. The prolonged spasm of cerebral vessels, especially arterioles and small caliber arteries. Thrombosis in cerebral vessels. Thromboembolism of cerebral vessels, as well as internal carotid and spinal arteries. And the rupture of cerebral arterioles that have lost their elasticity due to hyalinosis during a hypertensive crisis. There are three groups of the uh, cerebrovascular disease the ischemic cerebral stroke hemorrhagic cerebral stroke and hypertensive uh, pre stroke change the ischemic cerebral stroke is used to be called the cerebral infection ischemic cerebral stroke is a necrosis of any part of the cerebral cortex due to abstraction to the intracerebral and pre cerebral arteries as a result are uh, thrombosis and thromboembolism. Ischemic stroke is more common than hemorrhagic stroke. It occurs most often in the gray matter of the cerebral hemispheres and in the area of the subcortical nuclei. It is usually occur due to cerebral atherosclerosis and sometimes occur in thromboembolic syndromes and when the cerebral vessels are constricted from the outside. The ischemic Cerebral uh, stroke has three types the ischemic cerebral infection, hemorrhagic cerebral infection, and mixed cerebral infection. Ischemic cerebral infection more common, making three fourth of other types of infection. The liquefactive necrosis uh, develops there that they uh, surrounded with the demarcation uh, zone after two or three days and here the macrophage infiltrated here uh, and they uh, start the engulf of the products of the decomposition of the lipids and the myelins uh, and we call this macrophage at lipid laden macrophage that is seen in the uh, histologic slides as the granular balls macroscopically it is the white infection the area of the brain becomes pale and swollen, sticks to the knife when cut, becomes less elastic, the consistency is rough and doubtful, the color is whitish gray. The area of infection gradually softens to the liquefactive necrosis, we call the gray or the white softening of the brain. Necrosis gradually undergoes hydrolytic autolysis and the cyst forms in this place. The cyst is covered with a thin whitish gray capsule on the outside. If the site of ischemic infection is small, sometimes a glial scar may remain instead of a cyst. Here you see the cerebral infection in the two weeks and the cerebral infarct uh, one to four weeks. And the histology of the ischemic cerebral infection we discussed uh, uh, before that these are the granular balls or the lipid laden macrophage that they engulf the um, myelins and the uh, products of the destructions. And here you see the glial scar at the reactive astrocytes that they form the glial scar in the brain. This uh, the late cerebral infection. Here you see the cyst formation with the hemosiderin and the microscopically you see the uh, cyst formation there is the brain tissue and the uh, lumen of the cyst hemorrhagic cerebral infection relatively rare it usually develops in the cerebral cortex as a result of cerebral vascular thromboembolism and were rarely in the area of the subcortical nuclei first year forms also the white infection but after the hemorrhage to the site of the necrosis became to the red infection. The bleeding develops a few days after an ischemic infection due to the secondary negative change in the blood vessels in the zero and it is diapedes. Uh, at the site of hemorrhagic infection, the red softening of the brain occurs and remains a cyst with rusty wall. Third type of the ischemic cerebral stroke is mixed cerebral infection. 
Here you see the hemorrhagic cerebral infarction, a gross view of the hemorrhagic infarction. Also the cyst formation, the same picture you see. Hemorrhagic cerebral stroke, it is an acute circulatory disorder characterized by cerebral hemorrhage. Uh, it most often occur during hypertensive crises. And there are two types of the hemorrhagic cerebral stroke, hematoma, hemorrhagic impregnation, and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Hematoma it accounts for 85% of hemorrhagic strokes. And here uh, develops the red softening of the brain. In the following days, mainly glial cells and the siderophage appears in the peripheral parts of the hemorrhage. Blood clots and the destruction products begin to the absorbs and forms the cyst. The gliosis reaction turns into the thin capsule. The inner surface of the capsule is rusty as a result of hemolysis of red blood cells and local hemosiderosis. The liquid contents in it is grayish. It is usually found in the subcortical nuclei and in the cerebellum. In large hematomas, blood can also enter the brain ventricles, resulting in the base. Here you see the uh, schematic illustration of the brain hematoma, that subdural hematoma, intracerebral hematoma, epidural hematoma, and the gross view of the hematoma. Or we call the hypertensive intracerebral hemorrhage. Hemorrhagic impregnation occurs in the brain against the background of hypertension and during hypertensive crises. It occurs as a result of massive diapedesic bleeding from the vessels as the petechial hemorrhage. The erythrocytes enter between the neurons in the perovascular spaces and penetrates the brain and neurons are necrotized. Unlike a hematoma, the borders of the stroke Focus are not clear during hemorrhagic impregnation. Macroscopically, the separate small foci of hemorrhage appears to be connected to each other. In the place of these foci, the red softening of the brain occurs later. Hemorrhagic impregnations usually occur in the area of the subcortical nuclei. And uh, final this is of the hemorrhagic cerebral stroke, the subarachnoid hemorrhage. The synonym non-traumatic or spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage. It is found at the age of about 60, uh, 65. Causes. Occurs as a result of rupture of relatively large caliber arterial and, uh, or arterial venous aneurysm in the pia mater. Tumors or tumor-like lesions of pia mater vessels small chorea, systemic vasculitis, leukemias, hemorrhagic meningitis of various infections, origins, intoxications, and etc. And the 25% of the subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, of unknown origin. Here is the, uh, the gross view of the subarachnoid hemorrhage. The third group of the ischemic, uh, the cerebral, sorry, cerebrovascular disease is hypertensic pre-stroke change. First of them is hypertensic encephalopathy or the transitory ischemia. It is characterized by acute ischemic change in the ischemic cerebral artery itself, in the perovascular areas, and in the brain substance corresponding to these vessels during a short-term hypertensive crisis. When the crisis is long-standing, an aneurysm forms in the vessel wall resulting in a hematoma. Perivascular edema, small foci of the apedesic hemorrhage appears. Acute ischemic and hypoxic change, pericellular edema occur in the brain tissue, ischemic degenerative change found in some groups of neurons. These changes are temporary and reversible, we call the transitory cerebral ischemia. Local hemosiderosis occurs at the site of cardiovascular diapedesis. The clinical features of the hypertensic encephalopathy. Temporary signs of acute cerebrovascular disorders and some mild local paralytic complications are found. 
is characterized by severe headache, nausea, and vomiting, papilla edema, visual disturbances, seizures, confusion, and severe cases, coma. It occurs most often in the cells of the second, third layers of the cerebral cortex, in the somatic and vegetative nuclei of the medulla oblongata. Lacunar change in the area of the subcortical nuclei, especially in the perivascular areas, there are small cysts showing all diapedesic hemorrhage and rust colored walls. Subcortical lechoencephalopathy in the area of subcortical nuclei, axons of neurons and their myelin sheets are destroyed, and hyalinosis develops in the wall of arteries. Here is the microscope of hypertensive encephalopathy. Here you see the fibrinote necrosis of a small artery and the fibrinote necrosis of arterioles in the basis pontis. This is the special staining the phosphotunzic acid hematoxin stains show the fibrin. Thank you very much for your attention.